Okay, the final um, part of this video here series with um, you know the best workflow for working with data out of the CSTAR S50 in PixInsight is what I call the finishing touches area, the finishing touches section. And so here in the finishing touches, kind of our main goals are to look at any kind of final crop that we would like to do to this image. Um, we will look at um, some final curves adjustments now that we have the stars back in with the starless and nebula detail. And actually, I'm going to pull up the image that uh, I uploaded to Facebook from a couple of days ago. So I would like for you to see. Um, I think this is a better version of what we did from a couple of days ago. Where would that be? Um, downloads, Thor's helmet. Let's see if we can find it here. Probably went right past it. You know how that goes. There it is. Okay. Um, you know, I kind of like the one that we've been working on here in the tutorial a little bit better. I might have gotten a little carried away with the reds, although I was trying to bring out the hydrogen alpha that was there. Um, and of course the crop is just different. I just kind of squared in to a, to a square crop here of the main target. Okay. I'm going to, you know, I kind of like what I did in the first round, but also like this one. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and minimize this for now. And, um, I'm going to also try to give you a, a master light frame here that you can work along with. Um, for sake of space, I won't be able to upload all the original fits files, but I'll upload, you know, what, Pix and site stacked as far as a master file to work with, and you can work through this with me. Um, but yeah, I mean, I like this. We might touch up a little bit of the reds here and bring those out just a little bit more, but again, that's kind of to taste. Um, okay, so yeah, so we're dealing with the final crop, final curve adjustments, and then a star reduction. So this is a very cool tool. Um, this is built by Bill Blanchin. He has a great YouTube channel you can follow. And he has built a lot of these scripts. Um, a lot of this is Bill's work. Shout out to him and all that he's done for the astro imaging community. So what we do is we come in here and we tell the uh, script what starless background to look at. So we want to take that starless image that we've been working on this whole time. And notice how when I did that, notice that the script is already automatically backing down the star field image. The whole goal of star reduction is to just back down the intensity of the stars that are there so that the nebula detail comes out better and it doesn't get lost in the noise of a, you know, a very star um, intense background. And typically with nebula, you're going to have that because those are in the plane of the Milky Way galaxy. So you're going to have a lot of stars to look through and to look at. Um, galaxy images aren't going to have as much of that to deal with, if you've ever noticed that. Um, and that's just because most of the nebula that you're looking at are within our own galaxy. Um, and then you can also uh, enable something called initialize small star protection. And it'll bring in back in some of those more smaller uh, stars. But for me, that still makes an image that's too noisy. Uh, there are several different methods of star reduction. I typically tend to stick with the star method because that keeps your star color uh, looking the, the best. Um, so, and you can draw a box and come into a preview here and, you know, it gives you instructions on how to use the tool. Um, but I'm going to go to soft. If you notice with each one of these changes and iterations, it changes the intensity of how many stars are being removed. If you notice that. So like with this one, it keeps those smaller stars, um, with the soft method. The moderate method, it starts to cut down on some of the noise of those smaller stars and give you just a little bit more of the nebulas being presented forward. I think I like, it's a debate for me between two and three on moderate. I would probably tend to lean towards the three here on moderate. Yeah, I'm going to go with that. And again, this is to taste. It's really, you know, your your call. Let's see how that turns out. We can always come back and make another image because what it does is it actually copies the image. Now, I don't know if you notice something. This is interesting. And this happens with the C star. 
Uh, and so it's something that we're going to probably have to address with a separate video. I, 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 C star, when it captures images, it does not subtract a flat from every exposure. And part of that is because it's a fixed system. So you're not dealing with image tilt. Um, you're not typically dealing with dust internally, so you don't have to subtract dust motes, you know, so typically you can, you know, um, sweep off the front of the lens very, very gently and get any dust or any issues that would cause aberrations. But what's happening with the C-Star, and again, I think it's part of its dithering algorithm that's not running as well as it should, is you're getting some noise modeling that's occurring. So there's a way to deal with that. It's called creating a false flat in PixInsight, but it is a process. And it's something that I just learned how to recently do because I got the C star. Um, so what you can see is, is that when you have more stars present, it kind of masks that a little bit. But I think I remember now why I, um, why I cropped in. It's just because you're dealing with some noise artifacting here and some modeling that's going on that I'm still figuring out why C star presents that into the image. Again, I'm not, you know, disappointed in this image, but if I'm being picky, uh, and again, some of that might not even translate to being online eventually. So let's just stick with it. I'm, I'm fine with that. We'll just stick with that for now. And let me show you how you can deal with that a little bit. Come back in, open up a curves transformation window, open up a preview and you guessed it. We can simply, um, we will definitely want to involve the luminance mask here. And here's what we're going to do. We're going to open back up histogram transformation. And we're going to make that um, luminance mask darker. Yeah, baby. What that's going to do, it's going to isolate the areas of the image that we don't want to be affected versus what we do, and then make sure that, oh, what happened? Huh. I wonder if it's because I still have my histogram open. Weird. Why is that not letting me add that back in as a mask? Hmm. I'm going to pause it for a second and figure out what's going on here. Okay, for some reason I can't figure out why it's not allowing me to add that mask back on. Um, so, okay, we'll do this another way. We'll go with the old school rain selection method. We will find the points that we want to deal with. Oh, I know what it might be, because this was a starless luminance mask. And this is with both the starless and the stars combined. That's probably why it's not letting me do it. No problem. And really, for you know, sake of time, I would probably go back and go back into the starless and stars, uh, star separate to do this. But we're just going to go ahead and deal with it this way. Now that should take. It still didn't. That is odd. I don't know why it's not letting me. Sometimes Pics Inside is a little quirky. Um, let me pause the video. I'm going to save my project. Maybe there's something that's been introduced here that I'm not understanding or seeing. And then we'll uh, reopen it where, where we left off and try to get started again. Hold on. Okay, I just had to come back a couple of steps here. Evidently, um, there's something there that's not allowing me to add the mask. So, all else fails, just come backwards a few steps and add your mask and move on as if it never even happened. Okay, so we've got our mask enabled. I'm going to go ahead and invert the mask, so I'm only dealing with the background. So I want to try to deal with this background noise, um, as it does detract from the final image, as we were talking about earlier. So I'm going to come in here and open up curves and uh, oh, not that image, this one, okay, okay, 
Okay, I want to be able to look at the preview. Close that. I'm going to set it to RGB and K, which is basically all the channels. And I know I've got only the background selected here. Just to be sure, I'm going to some points there. Yeah, that's just too dark. It just starts to really deal with the, um, starts to mess with your darker and you start to clip, you start to clip data. But that's, that's good. That's very, very subtle. <coughs> it's, it's not perfect. You know, it's not going to deal with everything. Again, that's why some people uh, go ahead and crop. I also try to deal with the saturation level just a little bit. Notice how that was just very slow. I basically just clicked and it, you know, ticked it downward just a hair. It's it's almost imperceptible to you as you're looking at it on the screen, but in the end, it, it starts to look a little bit better. Um, ah. I know what we can do. With the mask enabled, because we want to protect our nebula and the sharpness and detail there, what we can do is we can open up Nori's Exterminator. You know where I'm going. We just want to try to deal with this a little bit. And we're not going to do it at 90. Maybe do it at around 60. Keep the detail where it's at. What we're trying to do is just draw attention. This, this does start to get into a little bit of the... Um, art side but not so much because really we're not we're not introducing anything new we're actually taking away stuff that isn't there which is noise which is modeling because that would not be there in the original um if if you're looking at live okay so i don't know how much this helped it but let's just go back one step it helped it ever so subtly um let me just see yeah, I'm going to leave it. Notice how it didn't make the um, nebula any worse. Let me go back. For the most part, it preserved all the detail in the nebula. And now we're going to flip the mask, invert it. And instead of running noise exterminator, you guessed it, a little bit of blur exterminator. Now, blur exterminator, <laughs> as a general rule, should not be ran on an image post- uh, stretching into a nonlinear state. <coughs> Excuse me. But for sake for the sake of what we're doing, um, you can cheat a little bit, and I'm going to pull it down to about 20. Zoom in on the area that I want you to see the difference here. So now we're selecting the nebula itself. Go around 24. <coughs> there's probably another basic tool we could use it yeah there's actually a ba couple of basic sharpen image tools here we could use let's just see what this does we can always go back yeah that overdid it didn't it yeah see that this is why you don't want to really do blur exterminator in non-linear data so let's close that let's go and find the sharpen image. Hold on. Okay, I have a tool here under processes called unsharp mask. Again, these are just final touches that we're doing. Um, so yeah, I would open unsharp mask and the default is at 80. So you can see if I do that, that's what it does to the image. That's a little too much. Although it is fascinating that you're starting to see a very faint, dark nebula structure there. <coughs> I'm going to back it down to about 70 and run it. Yeah, that's about right. So that when we zoom out, that's going to have the detail there that we want. And um, yeah, we've dealt with, with that for the most part. At this point, I'm, you know, I'm happy with the image. I'm not going to try to get it too much better. I mean, you know, for $500, <laughs> what we're dealing with and sharing this on social media for the most part, you're not going to print this typically. But if you do do that, 
The one final thing I wanted to show you that I kind of forgot about mentioning earlier in the processing part, which it doesn't really, it would make sense to do it here at the end because you're going to save yourself processing time. And that is to, let's go ahead and recombine the starless and stars together. Um, bring the stars, starless, stars. Okay. Now, and then we're going to go ahead and just go and do the star reduction. Yep. Two. Uh, I like two. We'll go with two. Okay. At this point, we're going to resample our image up. Because if you do want to print this out, um, you want to try to get a little bit more resolution here. And so we're going to basically double the resolution of our image. What that's going to do is it's going to deal with these blocky stars. So um, I'll show you that here in a moment. So let's go to process, resample. Okay. And we're going to basically double, go to 200% on both the width and the height. On the algorithm, we're going to use bicubic B spline. That typically has been the one with the best result for me, and everything else is good. Drag your triangle or hit the square, and there you go. Your image has been upsampled. Notice what it's done to these smaller stars. It's made them more round. They're not as blocky. We can compare that to this um, image here. Hold on. <laughs> You're looking at the same view. Yep. So notice how basically when you resample, you are upscaling your image to where the stars look rounder and they don't look as blocky on some of those smaller stars. So it's a, it's a, it's a nicer image for sure. Overall, that's something that you could certainly um, start to print. I mean, some, some people print this without upsampling it. Um, or, or, or depending on where they take it to get it printed, they might do automatic upsampling anyway. So yeah, there it is. Um, this is the final image. You know, I might crop this, but actually I'm gonna leave this as a different one and let's let's just compare to what I had shared on social media. Let me close some of these boxes so we can see what we're looking at. Yeah, there you go. You know, I could come in here and again, you don't wanna do too much, but you could come in here and try to bump up your reds a little bit. See how that works. Yeah. Be careful, you don't want to raise up the red background. But yeah, you can come in here and just tweak it ever so slightly. Look at that. But keep in mind when you do that, if it's a starred image, notice how that also starts to affect your stars. So I might bump it just a tad. It's very subtle. But yep, that's it. So then you can uh, save this image out as a JPEG. And that's what we'll do, because I'm going to share this with you. Tutorial pick. I'm going to share that on online when I share all these tutorial links for y'all to take a look at. So anyway, thanks for joining me. I hope this was a you know helpful process to work through the workflow. Um, you know, certainly you can watch this on double speed on YouTube and it uh, hopefully will help you as you, um, you know, see, see what PixInsight and these associated tools do. Um, again, it's a, it's a huge investment, but for the long term, it's going to be well worth its weight in gold. Um, again, again, it's crazy that PixInsight and Blur Exterminator, Star Exterminator and Noise Exterminator are about $550 total when you add it all up. But it's definitely great uh, um, software to have to really start to, um, you know, treat your imaging as a scientific endeavor, which is what I really like about PixInsight. So hope this has helped. And um, yeah, we'll uh, see you there on the on the forum. And um, I'm sure I'll be making more more videos as we go into the future here. Thanks.